Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how you can make authentic German Rouladen. Actually in German we say Rouladen. <laughs> and I love it when recipes are actually really simple. This one has a lot of steps involved that may be new to you, but regardless it is a really easy recipe. So stay with me and if you've been looking for this super popular German classic, this video is for you. And if you're new on my channel, my name is Anja. I love sharing how we create an urban homesteading kitchen. I also, because I'm German, have a lot of authentic German recipes. So if you'd like to see any other German recipes from me, I always love it when I hear a comment from you. So drop me a line below this video. Also, if you enjoyed this content, I love it when you give me a like and if you're new, hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification so you never miss another video. And if your watchful eye thinks that there's something a little bit off with this video, it could be that I actually recorded the video during one of the worst storms we had here in Northern California. We had rain, it was just pouring and it was storming anyways. At the end of the day, when I was done with the video, I realized that because we had a tiny power outage that some of my recording equipment failed. So I had to see what I can recover from the original video and then start a new one on the next day. But hey, that's the life of a YouTuber. You can't prevent everything from happening. But if you realize that there's something a little bit off, the lighting is a little bit different or something like that, then at least you know why. And without further ado, let's go ahead and make Rouladen. The challenge with making German recipes here in the US sometimes is the ingredients. And for this particular dish, it is the type of cut that is traditionally used for making Rouladen or Rouladen. And if you go to a butcher in Germany, they often have the specific rouladen meat cut out for you in the pretty much perfect size and the, the right cut for this. Now here you need to be a little bit more creative and there are several different cuts you can use. My absolute favorite one is actually flank steak. Um, then you can use top round and you can also sometimes get fajita meat. And this recipe is great because even though there is a standard ideal size because you're going to fill the meat slices and roll them up so larger slices longer slices lend themselves better to rolling up anything works and i always say do the best you can with what you have and that's what i certainly do then there are some different ways you can cook this. My absolute favorite one is a cast iron Dutch oven. You can also make it in a traditional classic pressure cooker. You can make it in any stainless steel or enamel cast iron pot on the stovetop. Or if that is heat proof, you can also stick it in the oven. I think I like it a little bit better in the oven because the heat is a little bit more even. I don't have those items, but if you have an instant pot or if you have a crock pot, you can also make these rouladen in there. And I know that Thermomix even has a recipe. So if you have that, you can check out the settings and how to make it in your Thermomix. And then there are some other useful equipment that would be good to have. Because I said that it is sometimes challenging to get the right cut of meat, you might get a piece of meat that is this thick and then you need to cut it in slices. If you have a butcher, you can ask them if they can do that for you. If you don't, you can do what I did and have a lot of respect. I rummaged through my husband's knife drawer and this is a extremely sharp knife. If you have something like this, please be careful. You only want to cut the meat, not yourself. I use that and I'm gonna show you in a little bit how I use this knife to cut the meat in thinner slices. And because even when I cut the meat, I often don't get very even slices or they're not thin enough, I use a meat pounder. I've had this wooden mallet for what seems ever. Um, I'm gonna leave links for all the items I mentioned here in the 
description box below this video but this one is really great and then you can pound the meat it tenderizes it but it also makes it more evenly thick and one more thing you will need for rouladen is because you're rolling them up and then you're braising them if you don't have anything that keeps them together they're going to fall apart i love these uh, poultry lasers essentially they are stainless steel needles if you will and sometimes i use two or three i find them uh, very sustainable because i can reuse them and they're also pretty quick sometimes i use two or even three for one piece of meat to keep it all together uh, this one i bought it some many years ago had some cooking twine in it that has been used up that is also a really good option to keep your roulade together it's one of the traditional ways but then you use it up you cut it up when you eat the roulade and then you throw it out so you have to buy new twine all the time if you don't have either you can also use wooden toothpicks or wooden skewers and again make the best with what you have the first thing i like to do is chop the vegetables ahead of time my leeks carrots and celery then i cut my piece of meat in as even slices as I can and obviously this is a very sharp knife so I want to be very careful here. And then I cut the remaining slices as thin as I can and as careful as I can. Now they're not as thin as I like them to be and not as even so I use my rubber meat mallet to pound them a little thinner and more even. I also like to pound them in a way that they become a little bit longer which makes it easier to roll them up and then I will do that with all the remaining slices of meat. And for the filling I spread about a teaspoon or two on each slice of mustard. I like to use German mustard or Dijon mustard. And obviously you can use less or more depending on your preference. My bacon is really long and thin, so I cut it in half and place two slices on each slice of meat. Next, I slice up some cornichons or gherkins I like to cut them in half lengthwise and place two of them on each slice of meat and then some onion slices. Now I use these poultry lacers to roll up my rouladen and I roll them as tight as I can and secure them the best I can with these poultry lacers. And for this one, I'm actually using two because the slices are not ideal rouladen slices, but again, we're doing the best we can with what we have. I have preheated some oil in my cast iron Dutch oven and I brown the roulade on the first side. The browning is really important because it adds that typical flavor and color. So you wanna take your time. Sometimes you have to do it in batches if you have more than what fits comfortably in your cooking vessel. Once they're browned on all sides, I transfer them to a plate and add the vegetables to the hot oil, stir them and saute them for about five minutes. To deglaze the vegetables, I add a good cup of red wine, a bay leaf, and the roulade back to the cast iron Dutch oven. I add enough bouillon chicken stock to cover them at least by half. Put a lid on and place them in the oven at 320 degrees for about 90 minutes. After that, I check them for doneness. And if they're not quite tender, you can always return them to the oven for another 20 minutes. 
I take the Rouladen out, place them on the plate. And strain the vegetables through a mesh strainer to collect the liquid. Add a tablespoon or two of butter to the hot Dutch oven and a tablespoon or two equal amount of flour. Stir it up. A little bit more red wine here and the cooking liquid to create the sauce. I'll let that boil for a little bit to thicken it up. Stirring constantly, add some tomato paste, about two to three tablespoons to taste. Add the rouladen back to the Dutch oven and roll them in the sauce to, to coat them evenly with sauce. And this, by the way, is my absolute favorite way to eat the rouladen with a lot of sauce poured on top, some braised red cabbage, and you can use simply boiled potatoes like I am doing today. You can use dumplings or you can use German schwitzle. There's a lot of different things you can eat with your rouladen. I'm actually gonna turn off record, sit down and have this nice meal for myself. And if you're looking for more German recipes, I have an entire playlist here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.